Hey everybody, this is Dark Guards, and we're back with another video. So I want to quickly go over kind of why you guys have been seeing some videos on visualization and pathfinding on the channel. So what I'm working on, and I've kind of been doing this mainly in the stream, so those who have seen the stream, you'll probably understand what's going on, but we were having issues with the thermal system for atomic science. It's pathing, it's finding, it's spreading heat, it's doing what it's supposed to do, but it's not perfect. It's basically having an issue where I believe it's favoring heat transfer on the north side, instead of equally transferring on all sides. So what you'll have is that the east and west uh, directions it goes will have a pretty even transfer, but then on north and south, south will be colder than the north side of the uh, direction transfer, and it'll end up kind of unbiased as well. I believe this also has a uh, up and down bias as well, but we've been able to confirm that directly because usually when you build a reactor, you're not really caring how the heat travels up and down. Um, so we ended up building a, a pathing test because we were looking at it like we needed to know what this system is doing. We need to know how these pathfinders are behaving, what they look like, visualization. So I built this tool, very basic, built it in atomic science, eventually this morning pulled it out to its own repository, that way I could do more with it without affecting the commit log of atomic science and triggering builds when we don't need to be triggering builds. So the most basic version of this, let me go ahead and uh, change the time because it's got a, I'll leave it on the basic playtime. So we started first with a breadth first pathfinder and actually let me, I'll, yeah, I'll leave this up. So you've seen the algorithms without these in it. We actually added some randomized walls here to test the stuff. So we hit play and we'll see the pathfinder spread out and you kind of run, see it run and it runs at a very slow rate. I believe the previous videos I was running, I left it run at this slow rate. And then I think later videos I sped it up because it's really, really slow. So we're gonna actually speed this up as well. So you'll see this, uh, this is a basic breadth first. Basically what, what, the, um, what breadth first means is that you're going to be pathing on the edge connectors first, uh, counter to depth first, which depth you're going as deep as possible, breadth you're, you're staying close, I believe. I don't, I don't know the exact definition of the word breadth. We got this kind of system here and we can kind of exactly watch what this does. So you can watch it do its thing. So uh, let me slow this down so I can point out each element here. So the yellow dot is the current dot that it was on when it took a picture of this. And then the pink dot is the blocks it's added. Green dots have been already pathed, red is the center, and blue are ones waiting in the queue to be pathed. Let's go to the uh, depth first one here. So depth first ends up actually just basically going in one direction. You see it's gonna go as deep as possible. And if we end up speeding this up, you'll kind of watch how this plays. So it'll go through and it kind of snakes through the system and it does a whole bunch of stuff. This is kind of really why I wanted to see how this pathfinder behaved because it's not pathing um, in a certain way. It's not doing what you would expect it to do. So it's very cool to kind of see how this behaves because if you see the step snake system and you compare it to the breadth first, the breadth first iterates out in an almost really nice iteration. Then we kind of were working on this and I was trying to figure out because the, the goal of doing this, is I need to find a better algorithm that's going to run, that's going to generate a much more consistent heat transfer rate. So we wanted to find algorithms that would do a little bit better. And we kind of wanted to research it. We want to experiment. We wanted to do stuff that um, we could see what's going on. So the first thought about this was to just take the breadth first and do a box pattern. So start off with a box design. This is something I've tried in the past. I haven't really had much success with it. But you end up running it and it does more or less the same thing that the breadth first does. So there's no real difference in here. Then we did a quick start. Quick start is exactly what we currently use except we use um, the sorted quick start down here as so we're using the current version. So we'll play this. This is no different than a normal prep search. It just means we, we started with four additional nodes or in Minecraft it's six because we have uh, 3D, this is 2D. Uh, but we go to the quick sort, so quick sort, same ideal, hit play. It's a slightly different algorithm, but it more effectively results in pretty much the same pathing. And then we got the box version up to so the box version. We can sit here and play. You see the results are not much different. You just get a slightly different kind of edge corners here. And the patterns are just going to be a little bit different looking. So there's a slight different pattern to it. But in effect of this, it's almost identical. But working on all this, I realized, you know what? I know some ways we can actually end up working on this. So we ended up building what's the, sh the, the shell box sort. And this is one of the last videos I uploaded here. So the shell box sort, what it kind of works and how it uh, functions is it's, it is a breadth first pathfinder but it limits the, the breadth first system to work out in a kind of shell pattern. Let me stop this and I'll kind of show how this works uh, where we run this at a certain rate. So it starts off by pathing out and it tries to build a box shape. So it builds the box shape and with this we got these light blue dots. So light blue dots are outside the range of the system. It's basically, okay, I, I'm going to path to this next, but it's outside the range currently so I'm not allowed to path to it. In the code, how it works, and I'll go ahead and stop this so we can go look at the code. It's not. I've got this open source so you guys can look at it and do whatever you want with it. But it functions by pretty much going out to size iteration. It loops through just like a depth uh, uh, or a breadth first pathfinder. So this is stuff is pretty much identical. 
But when it goes to add a node, it goes, hey, am I in range? If I'm in range, I'm going to add it to the queue. If I'm not in range, I'm going to add it to the next queue set. When we then run out of stuff the queue at the very bottom of this loop, we then dump everything into the queue again. And of course, I've got some extra stuff in here so I can see what's going on. I mark the data, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to explain how all the code works. You guys can look through it. Uh, we'll go through here and this will run and we can watch it play and I can go ahead and speed this up too. So we'll go ahead and hit play, get it much faster. And it goes out in a kind of shell-like pattern and we'll get it to be really, really fast here. So you get this nice, beautiful iteration pattern going out. And the cool thing about this one is this isn't really affected by uh, block distribution as much. Although when we go to implement this for the thermal system, we aren't, we aren't going to really care how this kind of works. Because the fact is you'll be able to path through blocks just fine. The thermal system doesn't really care. It just wants to go, it, what blocks am I touching and how should I path through them? So it'll do that kind of system here. And then I made a circle version of this that just, it does the same exact thing, except it goes in a more circle pattern. Uh, we're probably going to use the box system first, um, is what we're probably going to try. We're going to try a few different ones. We're going to implement the, the thermal system in this first, because I want to watch how the thermal system will behave actually in a real environment. Or not a real environment, in a, in a controlled environment before we go to the real environment. Well, that's kind of what's going on. We built some really cool visualization software so we can see what is going on with the logic in a much controlled way. And the cool thing about this, by the way, is I can sit here. I have next button so I can sit here and watch exactly what it does. I can see exactly how it behaves with each condition. And as we go, we'll be able to build um, different things. Because the cool thing about this, I can disable these random walls. And what I plan to do is find a way we can load in geometry in here and actually watch what the geometry does for it. And this won't just be used for atomic science, I'll be using this for ICBM as well and any other mod we potentially go through. So if we wanna test, um, say a pathfinder for a pump, a water pump, we can then say, put a whole bunch of water blocks in here and say, okay, watch it path out the water or something like that. Anyways, I'll see you guys later and uh, we'll get some more videos out here.